Yes. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the webinar series by IFE. My name is Neha. I'm from Vest 2325, and currently I'm doing my internship at Creative Software Private Limited. I would like to extend a warm welcome to Dr. Sagar Varangi, sir, Dean Academic IFE. I'm also delighted to welcome our esteemed professor, Vinod Kumar Sarma, sir. Professor Vinod Sarma, sir, is a distinguished scholar and business leader with over 30 years of experience in higher education, finance, and entrepreneurship. He holds a master's in business, is a chartered accountant, and is a certified independent director recognized by the Ministry of Corporate Affairs. He is also an accomplished author of the book Financial Decision for Entrepreneurial Success and has significantly impacted the Institute of Chartered Accountant of India as an advisory member of the Board of Studies. Passionate about knowledge sharing and fostering innovation, he currently serves as a professor at the IFIL Institute. Without further ado, I request that Professor Vinu Sarmasal take the charge. Thank you. Thank you, Neha. It was uh, nice uh, seeing you after a long time. I take this opportunity to extend my uh, deepest gratitude to Sagar Sir, who took this initiative of starting these webinar series where we can interact with the students and uh, inform them about the latest trends and the development which are happening in the field of business. I also extend a very uh, warm welcome to all the participants who are joining us or who will be joining us or who have joined us for this webinar. Uh, without uh, uh, much delay, I seek the permission from the chair to start sharing my screen and start with my presentation. Am I? Sir, please. Ah, thank you, and sir. I would like to thank you for sparing your time for sir. this valuable session. Thank you. Thank, thank you, thank you very much. much. Thank you, sir. I hope I'm audible and my screen is visible. Perfectly, sir. Right. So uh, I would like to uh, start this series. I mean, I'm sure that the participant must have been going through various webinars uh, which have already taken place in the past. But uh, I have been taking this responsibility of sharing uh, about the career path in the modern business landscape. Now, this is an interesting topic, uh, and uh, let me share with the audience that I'll be taking maximum 45 to 50 minutes, where I'll be talking more about the, what has changed over in, the, in this last one decade. So if you look into the title of today's presentation or the today's webinar, it talks about that we are going to discuss about various career options and the path which, is, which are going to open or which are available to the management graduates those who are doing their management professional courses in the form of MBA or PGDBM. Moving with uh, ahead with that, so let me share with you all the agenda which is lined up for today. So today at agenda is I'll be talking about certain global realities that have changed or that have uh, you know altered or they or that have dis disrupted the way things were normally done earlier. I will also be discussing about the impact of those global realities. Then I'll be coming down to the career and job landscape. That is what type of skills and the jobs are coming up or opening up in times to come or as of now. Then I will also be discussing and highlighting about the careers and jobs which are in demand as of now and as of in, in coming uh, you know, three or four years. I'll talk about the implication of this shift that is change has taken which the change which I will be talking that has taken place in the career profiles and the career jobs. Then I'll be talking about the employability skills. And finally, I'll conclude my presentation with very few takeaways. So to start the presentation, I once again welcome you all and I express my deepest thanks to the I feel uh, Dean Academics, Dr. Sagar Bharange, for giving me this opportunity of sharing whatever little knowledge I have. I'm sure the audience will be you know, benefited by the facts which I'm going to unfold in another 40 minutes time of now. 
So with that, I start my presentation. Let's look at the certain uh, global realities. Now, these are the, these global realities I'm talking about that have taken place in the last seven, eight years, right? So you look, you, if you look into the realities like economic, social, environmental, and technological changes, you know, the economics has changed, the socially people, uh, demographics have changed, and the environment has changed. And uh, this all has also forced, and we are witnessing a great technological changes that's happening all over the world. There is a rapid development and spread of digital and artificial intelligence technologies. AI stands for artificial intelligence. I'm sure this younger generation must be fully aware of this generative AI, chat, GPT, we all are using it. Then third change, which reality is that there is a declining need for manual and physical skill. Now, when I say manual and physical skills, I'm talking about the computational skill, the calculation skills, the physical hardcore level skills. These are on a declining trend. I'll explain later in the later part of the presentation why they are happening. And fourthly, there is an increasing demand for technological, social, emotional, and cognitive skills. I'm sure the technological skills, we all know that, that is program, programming, coding, you know, everything. Social skills, I'm talking about how you connect with the people, how you connect your with your customers. Emotional, how do you handle the pressure? How well you know what you are capable of, your strength, your weaknesses. And most importantly, the skill which is going to emerge in the, ne in the near future is the cognitive skill. How you think, cognitive mean it means simply means that your thinking skills are going to play an important role particularly in an environment where we are dealing with the artificial intelligence. So these realities can be summarized in the form of there is a tremendous amount of digital, tra digital transformation taking place. We all know Digital India campaign by the government. So earlier going digital was, in a, was, a, was, a, was a method of finding an opportunity which has now become a necessity. If you, are no, if you do not have your digital footprints, presence, you are no more in the business. So that means somehow or the other, we need to be technically aware of what things are happening. And we must at least understand the potential the technology has to offer. Next is the digital transformation, which in particularly happening in business operation is a good amount of automation. The technology and the digital transformation has changed the rules of communication and collaboration. There's a lot of concern for the security, innovation, and efficiency. There is an increasing demand for platforms which are digital. Now, I, I was thinking initially to talk about the career path, but then when I came to know about the audience, I realized that I should talk about those job uh, options which you students as, are familiar with. So you all are familiar with the word digital marketing. You all are familiar with the word data analytics financial intelligence and fintech. So my area of concern will be these four or five uh, options. And you'll be surprised. I'm going to prove with the facts and figures of McKinsey and World Health or Economic Forum that what we are going to discuss today will definitely going to shape the reality of career landscape in times to come. Now, all these changes, the global realities are pressing the needs for you know, accelerated technology adoption and innovation. We all hear these words, you know, adopt the technology and innovate. But the problem is, or the real concern is, how do we adopt and how do we innovate? Technological escalation of work is taking also place. That's another impact of what you call uh, the digital transformation. And this lead is all leading to what you call as skill disruption. Now, when I say disruption means Earlier, we were having certain financial skills, marketing skills, business skills, and those skills were able to allow, those skills were enough for us to get a job, stay in the job, and flourish and, you know, scale new heights in the business landscape. But with this technological and digital transformation taking place, these skills are no more relevant. And to prove my point, I'll share another slide which will be shocking for most of you. The digital economy is redefining the future of work. Redefining means the way work is being done. How the future work will be, it will be totally redefined. Surprisingly, World Health Organization says 65% of the students 
who will be starting school today will be holding or will be doing the jobs that don't exist. Now, this is a bigger and a major concern, which means that whatever we are studying as of now, but when at the time when we go for the jobs or we starting a business, we need to have some different set of skills because the jobs which are going to emerge are no more related to what you're going to study. So that's an interesting thing. And you will be surprised that uh, the, you all must have seen this information that 36% of IIT Mumbai graduate fails to get the placements. Now, to make it authentic, I have taken the India Today web, web resource also, so you can go and read the article. Now, in a way, if we look into this this highlighting, uh, you know, this information, it clearly says that okay, more than 40% of the students are still not placed. IIT is some, one of the premier institutions. And this forces me and this bothers not only me, but all of you also. Then what should be done about the career? Because most of us are not able to go to the IIT. So we have opting for other institution. So my presentation from now onward will focus primarily on how to deal with the uncertainty. So if you if the earlier slide was very, very correct, it's a complete mismatch of a skill. What is, is required and what is being produced is does not match. And if it doesn't match, it Im immediately leads to what you call as unemployment. According to the world, now I am supporting my, uh, my argument with certain you know, facts and figures. I hope you all take a note of it seriously. World Economic Forum says that 97 million jobs will be growing and at the same time, 85 million jobs will be decreasing. The demand for those jobs will be decreasing. And this is nearly going to happen down the lane the next year. So the type of demands, uh, jobs which are going to in demand is like data analyst, digital marketing, and business development professionals. You must have noticed I have mentioned these three in my inaugural, you know, in global realities that I'll be talking about it. And look at it, World Economic Forum also talks on the same line. The jobs which are going to be, you know, on a lower side will be the repetitive jobs, the comfort zone job, that is data entry, administrative, bookkeeping, accounting. Now this gives an, as a matter of fact, Institute of Chartered Accountant is also very concerned because now the role of finance professionals and the marketing professionals and other professions, everything is going to change. So how we are going to adjust with that change, we are going to discuss in the next few lines. So if you look into it, the, uh, if you look into it, the increasing demand for the professionals, which is in the earlier slide you've seen, the data analyst the digital marketing professionals, business development professionals, and the FinTech. So this is skill disruption is basically creating a havoc. And uh, for us, it is really a problem because 75% of the skills have changed in the last five years. That's the impact. Technology is scaling at an incomprehensible speed. And we are now moving from adoption curve to adoption rocket. Let's put it this way. Look at the slide and where my pointer, Landline phones, when came, it took almost 40 years to people for it to penetrate into the masses. But as of now, if you look into what I'm talking about, the tablet or a mobile phone, it is launched in the morning and by the evening it becomes viral and it simply the people are adopting that technology so fast because now they have more income, disposable income, and they have more, uh, you know, inclination towards using the technology. So if you come back to this, I just wanted to share that the top 15 skills for 2025, I'm not going far ahead. I'm talking about the next year down the lane. So those students who are going to start their professional journey in the 2024 must take this these slides very carefully. I'm talking about analytical thinking. I'm talking about the skills, this active listening. Now, when you look at these name, uh, I mean, no, titles of these skills, oh, everybody says that. Oh, we know that. Analytical thinking, I know. Innovation is simple. Active listening, oh, it's okay. Complex problem solving, it looks like we can do it. No, trust me, these are not there, that very easy skills that you can master. These are all basically cognitive skills. These are skills where a lot of thinking is required. 
Now, everything thought that why these skills are going to be very important down the year, uh, down the lane, the next year or onwards. The reason is chat GPT, generative AI, artificial intelligence is dominating and it is a reality. We cannot do away with that. So artificial intelligence cannot do analytical thinking. It can produce the data, but to read the data, making sense out of the data and finding it out new ways of doing business is the job of human intelligence. At chat GPT or generative AI works on the principles of GIGO. If you are giving garbage, you are, will get the garbage out. So one has to be very clear as to about what type of listening or what type of learning we are going to happen or we are going to take place. It's again an important aspect. Chat GPT cannot solve the pro com complex problem because complex problems require, complex means it has a problem which has various faces, like pandemic was a complex problem. It was not easy for uh, you know uh, any AI solutions to come up with the medicine. It was human who required, and India pioneered in that, and we developed the vaccine. Then critical thinking. Now, critical thinking means the what-if analysis, the sensitivity analysis, then creativity, originality, and initiative. I'll be talking about these later. So you must think that the future of the education will be focused more in developing and acquiring the thinking skills, which looks like very easy, but it is not. So this brings us to the point that what we are supposed to do as a student, right? The implications and what you can do is you focus on learning. At I feel also we all have under the guidance of our group director as well as the dean academics shifted the focus from teaching to learning. Now I'll explain you the difference between the two. Teaching is a broadcast, but learning is experiential. You do, you experiment, you observe, you you know you draw inferences, you re-experiment, and that's how you learn. So if you look into it, there is an understanding involved, skills are involved. We do talk about the lesson for conceptual clarity. Then we allow you to practice. Then we allow you to train. And finally, all this gives you a certain level of knowledge and understanding, which you eventually use when you are there at the workplace. If you look at the reskilling needs, which we have talked about, 50% of the employees by next year will have to reskill themselves. You know, you cannot afford to stay where you are. So that's what it says okay, that you need to move ahead and think ahead of time that what is required and accordingly prepare yourself. Otherwise, be ready for the same facts and figures to face that 36% of IT professionals or the batch of 24 are still not placed. So placement largely depends on the skills. We were thinking that different uh, job openings should be there. What type of a jobs will be there? How much salary I can do? It eventually boils down to the fact what you bring onto the table, what you can do for the organization will decide your employment level and the income. Let's put it this way again. So as I have mentioned that the, these skills which are emerging, you know, these are analytical thinking and innovation, complex problem solving, active learning, relearning, upscaling, and learning strategies, critical thinking analysis, and so on and so on. And I have already talked about, these are experiential learning, which brings us to the fact, you all must be curious, to what is experience, experiential learning all about? If you visit any educational institute website, everywhere they are flashing that they are into the experiential learning, experiential learning. But you as a student must understand that it is very essential that how do we go with the experiential learning? Here for you it is. You look into this diagram, it was given by a call at the great researcher. How we, at I feel what we do is, we provide you with a platform for active experiment. We are not, we do not develop the culture of fearing from failure. We encourage you to do something, fail something. Learn something from that failure. Start doing then experience, whatever you experience, these experiences will help you in converting your learnings. Now, when you, we keep on doing this, for example, I'll put it this way. Now, let's say, for instance, in field of a finance, I ask my students to you know, develop a fina financial forecast, 
for a company based on the historical data available. Once you start experiment, you explore those financial historical data by actually doing it on MS Excel. Now you experience and you observe, sir, there are certain abnormalities in this data because the way data should be, it is not the way it has to be projected that way. You learn about the red flags in finance, we call it as those warning signs about the companies. That's a small example to make you understand what experiential learning is. I'm sure Dr. Sagar will be talking some other time with you all about the Global Citizen Leadership Program, I, uh, I6, we have a RAIN lab. You name it and we do it everything where you are the one who are going to do it and we are there in the process of your learning as a facilitator, as a mentor. We, we, we don't restrict to the classroom sessions. It's a residential campus, which means a person like me of my age is available to you from nine o'clock in the morning, say till in the six o'clock in the evening, even after that. So we sit in the cafeteria, we sit in the uh, you know uh, lunch lounge and we talk about it. So this brings us to a very important topic that is the employability skill, which also people call it with a different name as soft skills. So let's do a reality check and we'll go with the fast one. That's an employability skills checklist. So first is let's define what is in a skill because I have used this word skill so many times as of now, and you must be having a different notion about this skill. A skill is nothing but your attitude and competence. Now, when I say attitude and competence, you must be wondering as to, you know, all of you have a different attitude and you have a different competence level. But from the HR perspective of the uh, organization who hires you, they look for your mindset. Attitude is nothing but your mindset. That is, are you a fixed mindset person or you are a growth oriented? That means, do you always are you a positive mindset person or you're a negative mindset? So at I feel we do help you in changing your attitude. Because you come from a different background. You have done your graduations from a different way. But when you are with us for two years, we do work on your mindset. Competence is your ability. We provide you with a lot of encouragement to experiment, do, learn, and enhance your skills. So the first skill I'm going to talk about is the proactiveness. My way of explaining to my students things is that I always use synonyms. So if you look into the proactiveness means it says action changes things, you know. We always believe in action. So I am sure, uh, I mean, uh, Sagar sir will be briefing you sometime the other. We almost have a, almost 15, 20 committees and these are active committees. Now, let's like, say for instance, cultural committee, sports committee, food committee, you name it. So we proactively involve students because eventually when you are at the workplace, you have to take actions. You cannot think, think, think. The people have to take action. And the best proactiveness approach is volunteering. You trust me, none of the committees have students who have been forced to join. It is they have volunteered. So look at the word willingness, initiative, that readiness. Okay, I will do. So proactive people are always definitely high in demand. Second, we were talking about active learning. Now, you remember the movie, uh, I don't, forgetting the name, How's the Josh? So that is learnability talks about the enthusiasm level. So, you know, how is your grasping abilities? How fast can you, you know, learn? What is your level of enthusiasm? What type of energy you bring to the organization or to the team you work with? Now, remember, these skills which I'm talking about, later I'll explain how you will be acquiring them. Working in a team, the toughest skill which is most desired by the organizations. You know, here you are talking about, I'm talking about empathy. Empathy means it is different from sympathy. I'm talking about you know, understanding and appreciating every person's views. So GCL was is a platform at I, I feel where you we we encourage and we force you to develop empathy. We force you to listen to the others in the group. And that's how the group dynamics evolve. And that's what we call it as responsiveness. Then there is an important concept of self-leadership. That's an again very important skill. It talks about the awareness. Are you aware about yourself? What you can do, what you cannot do? How well you are organized? Are you motivated by yourself internally or you are motivated by external factors? So these are the things or the qualities which are evolved or which are developed or which are nurtured through the teamwork when you work in the committees. Fifth skill is the discipline, which I 
I mean, I'm very fondly using that word is professionalism. Professionalism is not the job you do. It is how you do the job. That's important. Now, this is, these are the skills which are, you know, also considered as a transferable skill. Aap kisi bhi discipline mein ho, whether you are in a marketing field or in the finance field, everywhere these skills are going to be required. So for example, punctuality plays a very important role. How is your body language? Nonverbal communication. What are your etiquettes? Your mannerism? How you address females in the office? How do you address your colleagues? All these are, you know, these makes a lot of, this gives an idea about how professional you are and accordingly you are being required. So we, we do have uh, Dr. Chetna who helps in nurturing the professionalism in all of you uh, before the placement season starts. Next is the problem solving skill. It talks about, I mean, what I have spoken about it. It talks about the positive mindset. That is, what are your perspective? I'll share the difference between the two words. One is perception and the other is perspective. Perception is basically subjective. I, my perception may be, you know, not universally acceptable. But when I say perspective, Hindi word for perspective is nazaria. That is the outlook. So this outlook is an objective term. So we for, encourage to have a positive mindset despite all the problems are there as far as the jobs are concerned. Most importantly, the seventh skill is your communication, like the tone and the pace of voice, choice of words, body language, which is the nonverbal. So these days, I mean, uh, I was informed and I was reading an article on HBR, the Harvard Business Review. They say the new trend of jobs is that they ask the candidates to wait in the uh, waiting lounge where there are several cameras put, which these cameras are being observed by the HR professionals, they will make you sit for an hour and observe that what and how you conduct yourself at that point of time. So I believe I, um, when I was there at the campus, uh, the Dr. Chet now used to talk about it, that whenever you are visiting any corporate office for placement purposes for the interview, please make sure that you conduct yourself in absentia, very properly, because you think nobody is watching, but there are so many eyes who are just waiting and watching your nonverbal communication, your tone and pace of voice, choice of words, and things like that. So this brings us to the, uh, if we summarize, you find that, you know, the most important skills uh, down the lane will be the cognitive skill, that's the thinking skill, interpersonal skill, that is the communication, self-leadership, that is awareness, and the digital, that's the technology. Now, this brings us to the three levels of, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, if you, more, when we look for an employment, we are definitely talking about the skills. So the proficiency and skill related to employment, if I have to talk about it, according to McKinsey and company, it is the adaptability. Now, adaptability means that, can you cope with this uh, uncertainty? Now, I have noticed from my past experience that students, uh, I mean, when you are doing a professional course, very quickly come up to a conclusion that I am fit for marketing, I am fit for you know, finance, I will only opt for operations. That is the rigidity. Explore. We at I feel allow you to explore. We do not restrict yourself I, we suggest you rather we strongly advise you not do not try to frame strong opinion about yourself. You think you are good in finance, but you never opted or you never explored the zone of marketing. Once you do that, you may find that you are very good in selling the financial products and services, which is a combination of marketing and finance. So the most, if you wanted employment, Keep yourself flexible. Maybe now I could see that 36% of IIT students, those who could not get the placements, were not very adaptable. According, I mean, I'm not sure, but I think they have a very rigid or a fixed mindset. Remember, the mindset skill was the fifth one, which was again playing a very important role. So keep the options open. Do not close it. To explain this, I'll ex uh, share a small example. When I was young, I mean, I mean, not, not young in the sense, when I used to come home from my office, there are two options in front of me. One, I would say that I'm hungry, give me something. The second I can ask with my wife is, please get me Maggie. Now, 
out of these two options, you find that if Maggie is not available at home, I would get the answer, Maggie is not there. And the things end. That means I have made my choice restricted, so my options are restricted. But when I said, I give me something to eat, now you can imagine, I may get a glass of milk, I may get some fruits, I may get some biscuits, I may get Dalmot, I may even get Maggie also, and I may get some you know, snacks also. So that's the beauty of adaptability. You know, be very flexible. Now, if you want a higher income, then you need to have a strong proficiency in a skill called work plan development. And work plan development means that you, how do you organize yourself? That means a lot of self-confidence comes into place. Now, again and again, I'm talking about how we do it, I feel, how we do it, I feel, because this will help you giving a clear idea that what can you expect from a management institute? Because when you participate in these companies, you must have seen the girl Neha. I have seen her when she came for the first time for the class, and now she is hosting and anchoring the webinar. And she is in the third, she will be going to the third semester now. That type of a confidence, imagine, works wonders for your personality. Then last uh, is if you want job satisfaction, please go for the intrinsic. You need to be self-motivated. You don't have to get external factors involved so that you are motivated and you are inclined for doing good things. You do it for yourself. So if you look into this slide, you will say that if you want good employment, then you should know how to deal with the uncertainty. If you want your income to rise substantially, you need to be very, very self-confident. And if you want job satisfaction, you need to have self-motivation and wellness. Right, so now I'm going to share about the things which are going to be in demand for, so that you can prepare and uh, you know, uh, organize yourself accordingly. Time management and multitasking will be three times more in demand. Now, when I say multitasking means, that's what I was talking about. You cannot say I am from finance, so I cannot do marketing. I am from operations, so I cannot do finance and marketing. See, the point is, that's the beauty of the course which you have opted for. When I'm talking about business, it's a holistic program where you are being given information or you are being made aware about the business functions related to productions, operations, sales, marketing, finance, accounting, costing. And when you, when you know all these things, organization hire you for the things because of your awareness about all these facts. Engineers lack it. So you must be wondering, even after doing BTEC, I have interviewed certain students for the IFIELD program. They are saying that we wanted to learn the various business functions so that maybe after down the lane, say three or four years, if I want, if they wanted to start their business or their career uh, as an entrepreneur, they must be having an understanding of how business works. So multitasking. So never ever say that I cannot do three or four things at the same time. I'll give you another example of multitasking. Uh, multitasking is not exactly multitasking, but how management programs are delivered. It's a very tight program. It starts from 9.30, 9 o'clock in the morning, and it ends till 4 or 5 in the evening. You know, one hour duration classes, one teacher gone, another comes, one teacher gone, and we are all with the um, uh, agenda of, you know, some may ask for a presentation, some may have a group discussion, some may, you know, force you to do something, role play, and things like that. So the idea behind this rigorous training is that you develop the habit of listening to different people simultaneously because workplace per be, you are going to face the same thing. You'll be listening to your boss, to your colleagues. You must develop the habit of sitting in a chair for eight to 10 hours because in office, you will be doing the same thing. So these are the training areas which we do not hard sell, but that's the integral part of the program. Next skill is communication and customer services has dividend to top three skills in the last job postings. I'm talking about all these facts and figures. I've taken it from McKinsey. So if you see, as we have discussed, communication. So the best way to uh, uh, you know, learn communication and develop your communication skills is to talk the way people talk professionally. You may be talking about, as of now, till your graduation, it was not that important. I have seen and I have interviewed certain students. Yesterday itself, Shruti was the student. She was very good in her communication skills. So we need to work on those skills. 
we need to be very when i say customer services it is all about listening to them then in the next five years you will find the ability to manipulate digital tools you know you should know what are the platforms and tools that's the digital marketing i was talking about it is going to be very important and 230 percent increase is, will be noticed in the demand for creativity and problem solving now these are the things which you should uh, you know you must be working on so all these things we do it you know, and by organizing certain workshops and, you know, creative games and management games and simulations and scenario planning that, so where you creatively decide and explore the possibilities of solving a problem. And last but not the least, look at it, the figure in 10 years, according to the interviews, the adaptability is going to become the top skill. So if you want yourself to be employable, please, I strongly urge from my experience, that do not decide the frame of your operations. Do not restrict yourself into the domain of marketing, finance, this and the other, right? Keep the options open. The idea is to get into the van, get into the bandwagon of the employment. Once you are onto the employment bus, then you can explore and experiment with the different seats which are available inside the bus for you to reach your uh, heights in your career. Now, let me take this opportunity to share with you what we do at IFPL. You know, you will be finding that uh, the words like initiating, experiencing, imagining, reflecting, analyzing, deciding, and acting, these are the action verbs which we follow. In the sense, we allow you to experience, we allow you to initiate, we allow you to act. And most importantly, particularly me, I force my students to imagine. I force my students to think and reflect that what has happened and what are the learnings from that? Analyzing is one of the most important skill I would strongly say. As a finance person, I can say earlier focus was, how do I make a balance sheet? Now the focus is, how do I read the balance sheet? Earlier the focus was how to pass the entries. Now the focus is, how do I get the red flags? How do I understand the green flags in the financial health of the company? So when I talk and I take my classes, my focus is now shifted from computational to analytical. I focus more in analyzing as to make students understand first the concept, apply those concepts and see for yourself that how well these concepts apply in the real world so that you reflect on those inferences, draw your conclusions, and decide and act accordingly. So most of the areas, if you, whether it is marketing, Sagar Sir is taking or operations or you know uh, any other domain, these are the guiding principles which were set forward by the uh, you know the leadership of uh, I feel, which is Dr. Sanjay Salunke. He strongly believes that the learning should be experiential. Let me add you one more thing at this point of time for the I feel. I'm saying not because I'm a part of I feel, but I want you to think critically also. For the last 15 years, IFIL has been focusing only and only on a PGDBM program. Any, can, any, I mean, guesses why? If the idea of IFIL promotion was commercialization, then they should have gone into any other institution like MIT or SI, SIBM and Pune Institute, you know, go for multiple courses. The idea is not that. The idea is to train the students, maybe limited in number, Surprisingly, the, if you visit the IFIL, you'll be shocked to see the infrastructure which the management has created for just 240 students. Unbelievable. That gives the idea that how focused we are. That is, if we last 15 years, if we are focused only on one program, then there has to be something or important. So we are continuing with that philanthropy of delivering value education to the students. So those who have taken admission, rest assured that you have not done a wrong uh, choice. You have come to the right place. And one more important thing is, lot depends on you. Things are there. You need to take initiative, experience, imagine, reflect, analyze, decide, and act. So at I feel all our efforts are focused to make you learn a broad range of skills and competencies. So if you, if you see that, we do not talk about teaching at all. None of the faculty talks about teaching. We are only for, there for learning. When I say learning, that means we are the facilitator. So we are the facilitator in the sense we guide you, we mentor you, we coach you. 
there is no strong, uh, you know, uh, dictatorship broadcast type of a thing. It's more of an interaction where we learn from each other. I mean, so many times I have learned many things from my uh, students. So the focus of learning is on practice and training. So which means the more you do, the more you practice, the more you become confident. And to check what you have practiced, we go with the training program that is summer internship and the uh, finally industry interface program. So at I feel we are mainly focused uh, as per the Sagar sir's uh, instructions to focus on building organization skills, execution skills, analytical skills, problem solving skills, and people skills. Now the, with this, I would like to give you a strong belief that uh, you know uh, whenever we talk about uh, focused uh, development of uh, you know skills and competencies, it is not one person; it's an entire team of faculty and students coming together for a common purpose, right? So that's what all from my side, exploring the career path in the modern business landscape. And I'm very, very thankful for a patient's clearing. And uh, I'm really thankful to Sagar sir for giving me this opportunity. And I hope uh, you people will be benefited from what I have shared with you today. Uh, I hope to see you guys uh, at I feel soon. Thank you very much, sir. And yeah. uh, guys, you can ask questions if you have any. You can type your question in the chat box. And if you're comfortable, you can ask us to uh, allow you to speak. We request all the participants to please ask questions. If you have any doubts, Vinod sir is here to, you know, give you guidance. Thank you, Ganeshka. Sir, we have uh, one question from Yash. Yeah. Yeah. He's asking, are there more such webinars going to be conducted? Uh, sure, definitely. I'm so sure. It was the C. Let me make it clear. Uh, who, who's the name? Can you name the person, please? Yes, sir. Yes. Ah, yes. Uh, see, it is the initiative of uh, our faculty, uh, Dean Academic, Sagar Pranagi, sir. And uh, I'm sure in the past also, there were many such webinars happened. And in future also, uh, these webinars will be continued till we the session starts. And even after the session starts, we'll be continuing with the series. Yes, sir. There is no, I've answered your question. Thank you. Sir, one more question is there. Yeah. They're asking, Sunny is asking, what are the job roles available for the FMCG companies for finance students? Hmm. And now see, uh, there is a one myth um, uh, that if you are in the marketing field, so you don't have to do something, anything with the finance. Now let's put it that way. The question is, what are the job roles for finance uh, students uh, majoring in finance in the FMCG? Now FMCG is fast moving consumable goods, right? So there you will find that we are the you are dealing with multiple product lines. Now these products companies launch into the market, assuming that each product is going to contribute towards the total profitability. Now imagine how you will decide which product to manufacture more and which to manufacture less. Should you manufacture it or should you outsource it? All these decisions are based on financial analysis. So every marketing decision which is taken by is backed and supported by facts and figures produced by the financial analyst or the financial uh, manager or the finance person. So in, whether it is FMCG or any other sector, I'm, 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 it's not that I am from finance, so I'm saying so. Financial decisions play a very important role in making or breaking the organization. Getting it or not? If you find today reliance has gone up to that level, again, please do consider that the person who is looking after the financial decisions for the reliance is a person or the team is very having a good sound understanding of the external environment as well as the internal potential of the company. Got it? Thank you. So one more question. We have ah, a lot please. of questions. So another question is, is it worth for finance students to do certificate courses in FinTech? Okay. Uh, this is, our, I mean, FinTech, I have used the word. So uh, first we should understand what is FinTech. Uh, with the advent of pandemic and uh, you know, digitalization, things have changed, right? So whenever uh, any company is delivering its financial product and services using technology, we call it as FinTech. Got it? So for example, Paytm, right? You talk about Bharat Pay. You're talking about delivering. For example, I have not been to my bank for the last 15 years just because of the fintech, right? 
So the so when you talk about the fintech, this is an emerging area. Like say, for instance, blockchain, cryptocurrencies, you know, use of artificial intelligence in finding out the financial fraud, money laundering. So these are the areas uh, which uh, comes under the preview of fintech. With this clarity, you have asked the question that is it worth doing courses, uh, uh, value addition courses in uh, fintech? Definitely, you require certain amount of uh, you know external endorsement besides the regular course. Because see, uh, as of now, if you talk, even the IMs are not very proficient in offering the courses in fintech because it's an emerging area. So everywhere, every other institute will say that you know we are offering courses, introducing or you know introducing you to the blockchain, cryptocurrencies. To validate it, if you do a course from NSDC or maybe NISM financial certification from external sources, which I feel uh, I I believe I, our institute is doing it. Sagar said has got the. I mean, we are our institute is affiliated with NISM as well as NSDC, and, and so these certification definitely will enhance the prospect of your uh, jobs. Uh, let me add one more thing. Those students uh, of the previous batch who were selected at e clerks and uh, Morningstar. They were uh, their the their appointment was a subject to this case that they should clear uh, their increments would be uh, much better if they clear an NISM certification. So we thought into it. So why can't we do it? So we have now uh, financial stu students opting for finance will have the option of doing an NISM certification. Sir, I hope I have answered. Yes, sir. You have, sir. One more question ah, please, on please. the certificate courses that IT provides. Can you highlight some of them for Janvi? She's asking. Uh, Janvi, there, uh, as I have mentioned, that there are two, three areas. Like, uh, I mean, I'm, I'll share you a very surprising fact. When I came to the I feel, uh, I was very surprised to note that, you know, out of 120 students, more than 50% are opting for finance. That has never happened. So you will, you will not find that in any other institute. So I was very surprised. I said, why? So that gave an idea because the students were very happy with their, uh, you know, uh, uh, the deliverables which they got as far as placement is concerned if they are opting for finance. Now, same goes with the marketing, same goes with the HR, HR less, right? So what we have thought is that for marketing, digital marketing is an emergent area, right? So we have digital marketing certification. For finance, we have a tie up with NI, not tie up. We are the official partner with NISM, that is a division of a training division of SEBI. Then we are also into the process of NSDC. These are the areas. So, if in finance you're talking about NISM, don't take it lightly. It's a very big, it offers courses from equity research analysts to you know mutual funds to everything. And these certifications, because they come from SEBI, have a lot of validity as far as the employment is concerned. Yeah. Right. So these are these were the two I remember. I mean, Sagar sir, uh, maybe taking a session, we'll be talking more about it. Yes, right? sir, definitely. Yeah. So we have another session coming up, guys. So yeah. before that, let's finish up the questions. Diksha is asking, how much does age factor affect the skills that we have mentioned? No, uh, I can only give you an example for this. Uh, I am sixty. And uh, I'll be completing my PhD in entrepreneurship next year. And uh, I got the award uh, as a uh, best researcher from Amity uh, University, Lucknow. So when I can do it at this age, you definitely are one third of my age. So age plays no criteria. Again, it is the level of energy, the enthusiasm which you bring to the table. Again, I say that uh, uh, clarity of expression. Now, uh, to add one more thing, if you allow Kanishka, I can add. Yeah. So yes, when you talk about the skills, one important aspect is when you're talking about the skill as far as communication is concerned, uh, normally people think that I am not very good in English, so my communication is bad. You agree? Most of the time people will say that I am very weak in English, so my communication is wrong. I have a very other feeling that communication is all about composure of thoughts and clarity of expression. Now, if you look into the webinar, I mean, I mean, sure, you will have the recording. You can share with these participants. You will appreciate the fact that my composure of thoughts were coherent and my clarity of expression was something. Language is the third thing which comes into the picture. I am not using any fancy words or jargons, but the way I am delivering this webinar, I have a very clear thing in my mind how I'm going to address my students 
what are the potential or the most likely questions coming to their mind when they're attending and how should I convince them that what we are going to do at IP? That's it. So focus on, don't bother about the age or anything. You focus in developing skill anytime you can develop it. But the level of enthusiasm should be very, very high. Yeah. Sir, so one last question we have yeah, from Hitesha. Hmm. She's asking, she has only one year of experience. So what kind of certification she can do to build her profile to, uh, before she moves on with joining the college? I don't think so. Right now is the time for, uh, you know, uh, taking up any course. Uh, don't worry, when you come to I feel the program itself is very, very rigorous. So I would strongly say that uh, you have a, only one month's time in your hand. I mean, before the classes start, enjoy, stay with your family. But when you come to I feel, come with the determination that you're going to take the course very seriously and explore all the possibilities that the I feel has to offer and uh, get yourself with a good placement. Sir, one last question. Yeah. Uh, uh, we would not be taking any more questions, guys. This is the last question I would be answering. So, sir, Sarthak is as asking, from skill point of view, can you please enlighten him with the examples, a time you did more than it was required in your job? I could not get the question. Please, can you repeat? So, sir, uh, Sarthak is asking, uh, if I, if you give me a moment, let me understand hmm. his question. So, I think Sarthak is asking, uh, at what point of your uh, life, have you given more to a job, more time to a job from the skill point of view? You didn't have the skill, but you gave more work effort, effort to the job. Mm, I would not say that, uh, okay, that I have given uh, more time or, or I what I could come from this question is, he's trying to know at what point of time in my life I realize the skill plays an important role in the job. Yes, yes. That, yeah. Put it this way, right? Hmm. So uh, the point is, it's it, it, this is the realization which comes when you deal with the uh, with the work environment, right? So uh, communication, despite being a CA, I'm into academics, right? So I realize that my clarity of expression and composure of thought is quite good enough, and I have empathy for my students because uh, if I share with you, you'll be surprised. Uh, in 10th, I got grace marks to pass with first division. I got distinction in all the four subjects, barring in maths. 12th, I got first division. Graduation, I did it with zoology, botany, chemistry. Then I applied for CA. I did it my chartered accountancy program with no commerce background in a record time of four years. After that, I became an entrepreneur. I started my company, which is a technology company still going on. I was with the company for 12 years. I got through with an app, uh, apprenticeship program at SP Jain Institute of Management, Mumbai. That is an application training program in collaboration with IBM and PricewaterhouseCoopers. That was a 100% scholarship program, and I was in the middle age. I left the family. I moved to Mumbai for one year. I was there with them. While I was doing that program, the technology is still not people are using it. That is a web sphere. We were taught a web sphere and AIX server with the IBM collaboration. While I was doing this program, I had a chance to earn another scholarship from XLRI that was designing organization for uncertain environment under the leadership of Mr. Madhukar Shukla. I came back to Kanpur again within a one month's time. I was there in Jamshedpur for another next six months. When I came back, uh, I thought of continuing with the company. But then I realized I was approached by another uh, leading newspaper to start a management institute. I was there with them. And then my academic journey started. During COVID, I realized that I had certain questions in my mind that uh, despite government pushing entrepreneurship so fast, MSME, so many schemes, but still that is not happening. So my research was that where are we lacking? So I'm working on entrepreneurial psychology. I share with my students all these things when I'm there in the class. So uh, putting it this way, the, that skills, you know, when do I realize? It is that uh, I realize quite late, but I appreciate that uh, at I feel I, Sagar Padange, sir, Dr. Chetna, Dr. Prashant, or and many other visiting faculties and so many other colleagues, they're there to guide you. That's what the purpose was. I could have talked about it 
कि योर जॉब विल बी एज फाइनेंस एनालिस्ट और फाइनेंस फाइनेंस ऑफिसर और सीएफओ दैट मेक्स नो सेंस बिकॉज दैट रिक्वायर्स यू टू समाइम सो राइट नाउ यू नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड वट शुड आई डू टू प्रिपेयर माई सेल्फ फॉर दैट जॉब सो फॉर दैट यू नीड टू प्रिपेयर योर सेल्फ एंड इक्यूप योर सेल्फ द स्किल्स दैट लर्निंग ऑफ द स्किल्स इज नॉट द हार्ड स्किल अर्निंग सर्टिफिकेट इज अ हार्ड स्किल वॉट इज सॉफ्ट स्किल इज एक्सप्लेनिंग making people understand that your potential your caliber your ability to do something all these things makes a lot of sense and these are the things we work at i feel we are very very focused in you know talking about it making you understand that how well you can connect in the future with your organization bosses in explaining that what you wanted to do and what you can do for them Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you for us answering so many questions and such. No, 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 no. It was my pleasure. I am very happy that I can do some. I don't know. Uh, I, I hope I have done justice with the uh, webinar. I, I tried my level best to come up with the things which uh, should help students in understanding that how they could prepare for themselves for the future. Or else, again, I repeated the slide which is haunting me in my mind is thirty six percent of IIT professionals are still not placed. So placement is not the criteria. on the basis of which we should assess the institute placement is definitely important but see for example i can get uh, as a placement officer i can kanishka get you to the doors of the placement room you know the interview room but inside the room what happens between you and the interviewer i cannot control it so then in that case you at that is the time when you walk into it's when you walk into the room that shows how enthusiastic you are your energy level your body language your confidence all these things are noticed and now how is it possible that in a span of 15 20 minutes one or two person can judge the level of your intelligence they are not concerned with that when i when, and this is the reason they ask the only one question where do you see yourself 5 years from now what that does not means that they wanted to hear the answer i wanted to become the ceo of the company no they are saying thinking that if you cannot think for yourself how can you think for my company so this is the important thing that means i should be clear sir i am looking for a organization where i can you know learn more skills the initial stages of the career is meant only for learning and when you start your job don't focus on what is my package don't focus and don't focus on focus only on can the organization provide a platform where i can learn something this learning is going to enhance your corporate hierarchy aap upar kitna jaoge that depends on how much you are going to learn in the initial stages of your job it's very clear definitely sir yeah. what happens between you and the interviewer the college cannot that's it and obviously and you and and then one important thing i, I like to say uh, that i read somewhere it says that if you wanted to please every person then start selling ice cream so if you expect that you know everything is going for every person is going to be all right no i am i am not saying that ki 36% is a dangerous i am saying that those students are still struggling right but that's not the end for them na? they will definitely get it so yes. you know those news have been taken seriously i am putting this news across because i wanted to explain the concept of adaptability right adaptability in the sense do not make up your mind in the initial stages i am for this i am for that i should do this i should do that i will not do this and i will do i will do that once you start in this area you are restricting your thinking and that's the sign of a fixed mindset which is not encouraged yes i think nayan has raised a hand let's ask if nayan is able to talk nayan do you want to ask something okay it's all right yeah yeah thank you sir thank you yeah. for your time thank you everyone for joining the session we are coming with more such such sessions soon so i hope you will be receiving up, updates from us please join the next sessions as well thank you sagar sir thank, thank you, you sir, thank sir. you vinod sir thank you vinod thank sir, sir once again thank you thank you sir thank, thank you. you thank you everyone thank you harsh thank you thanks thank kanishka please share the recording if possible Yes sir definitely I'll share thank you thank you